So you've already mentioned before that the M2 Mac Mini has to be the best bang for buck computer out on the market because for $599, you get a full-fledged M2 computer with 256 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM. And then also, if you do go through the education store, it's even lower at $499. And that computer can last you for five to seven years, even at that baseline model. But obviously at that price, Apple had to cut corners and they have been cutting corners in terms of what comes in the box with this Mac Mini because in the Mac Mini, all you get is a power power cable, the computer, and the paperwork itself. And even the paperwork is slimmed down to only like two or three sheets of paper, which honestly is a good thing. But in order to actually use the M2 Mac Mini, you need peripherals like a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse at the very least. So in this video, what I wanna show you guys is exactly what I use to power the M2 Mac Mini and my experience and give you some recommendations as to what are the necessities and the essentials to get started working with the Mac Mini. But these are my full recommendations that I use on a daily basis from keyboard, mouse, trackpad, to monitors and everything in between. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with the keyboard and mouse situation that I decided to go with with the M2 Mac Mini. Now for the keyboard itself, I've been using this Satechi X1 Slim keyboard, or at least one version of this keyboard for a very, very long time. And the main reason I like it is because it's as close to the Apple aesthetic and Apple style and even absolutely the Apple function that you can get to without actually having to pay that Apple premium price of I believe $120 to $150 depending on which Magic Keyboard you go with. So the X1 Slim by Satechi still gives you that chiclet style keyboard so if you're into the mechanical larger key travel type of keyboards this definitely is not going to be for you. This is for the person that really enjoys the Magic Keyboard feel, that really enjoys the keyboard on MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros already and is used to that chiclet style keyboard overall. So if you like that style of keyboard, then this one is a no-brainer because on top of what I mentioned already that it has, which is a chiclet style keyboard, the Apple aesthetic, it's made out of aluminum, it fits exactly what you would want from any Apple product, but it also allows you to A, connect up to three different devices. So you can connect this to your M2 Mac Mini, maybe a MacBook Air if you have one, like I have one behind me, an iPad Pro, which I also use on a frequent basis, and even your iPhone if you'd want to. So you could choose up to three different devices to connect to via Bluetooth, and on top of that, it charges via USB-C, not lightning like the Magic Keyboard. The only reason I would recommend going with the Magic Keyboard is if you want Touch ID. If you want Touch ID, then you have to go with the $150 Magic Keyboard directly from Apple because that is the only way to get Touch ID enabled, at least natively. There are some crazy workarounds, which I'll leave in the description below if you guys want to mess with some stuff. But if you want to unlock your Mac Mini with Touch ID, this is the only option currently. But if you are like myself, I like to use this as a touchy keyboard and then also supplement the unlockability, for lack of a better term, of unlocking the Mac Mini passively with my Apple Watch because my Apple Watch kind of acts as a biometric sensor to make sure that I can get in without actually having to type in my password to get into the Mac Mini. So if you have an Apple Watch, then you can bypass Touch ID entirely. And then if I move over to the mouse of choice, now I'm still going to recommend the Logitech Anywhere S line. So I currently have the S2, the S3 already did release. The only difference between the S2 and the S3 is that the S3 has a white colorway as well, which I think is beautiful. And then also they finally swapped out the micro USB to USB-C in order to actually get it to charge. But outside of those two differences, they are the exact same same mouse. So if you do find an S2 for cheap for around $50, $60 and you don't care about it not having USB-C, then that could be a way for you to save a couple bucks. But brand new, the S3 does come for $80. But from a quality perspective, what I always tell people about this mouse is this is the cheapest quality mouse you can buy because it does give you a little bit of heft and weight to it. So it gives you that premium feel in the hand when using it. It also has a clickable scroll wheel that you can change into two different settings. And then you also have two additional hotkeys on the left hand side of the mouse itself, which you can then set with their actual software to do whatever you see fit, depending on what application you're using. And then there's something to say about longevity with that Logitech Anywhere S2 and S3, because that is probably my longest tenure tech item that's currently on my desk. I've had it since around 2018, 2019, and still works perfectly well. But I've also been recently testing the new Satechi M1 mouse on the silver colorway, because it is a very budget-friendly mouse. For $30, you get an aluminum build, very high quality, very lightweight and easy to move around. It is a wireless mouse and it charges via USB-C. So for $30, the Satechi M1 is another great option if you're looking for a more budget-friendly alternative that can get the job done and get it done well, especially at that $30 price. Because at the end of the day, some people just want a point and click mouse that works and works every single time and has very long lasting battery life, which is what the Satechi M1 can do for you. So that is what I do from a mouse perspective. Normally it's a Logitech Anywhere S2, but recently I have been testing out the Satechi M1, which I do highly recommend for anybody looking to go in a more budget-friendly territory. And then you might have seen with the B-roll that I do also use a Apple trackpad, the Magic Trackpad. So 
The Magic Trackpad I mostly use for gesture-based control. So swiping with four fingers to show all the different windows that are open, swiping between applications, swiping also back and forth in Safari and things like that. So having the Apple Trackpad coincide and supplement the actual mouse that I use for point and click stuff is how I use both of them simultaneously. Now, I've looked a bunch for an alternative for this Apple Trackpad or the Magic Trackpad, but unfortunately there's nothing that gets you even close to the type of experience that Apple gives you with their trackpad. I know that the trackpad starts at about $130, $120 for the white version, and then $150 for the black version, which is, yeah, it's a very cool looking trackpad, but $150 for a trackpad sometimes is hard to justify, so maybe it's not something that I recommend, but if you are looking for a trackpad to use with your Mac Mini, there really isn't another great alternative other than the Apple Magic Trackpad, so maybe find a used one if you are somebody that wants to use a trackpad with the Mac Mini, but for $120, it's probably the best you're gonna get from a user experience standpoint, and obviously the build quality is great coming from Apple. And now those accessories are sitting on my Orbit Key desk mat. So this Orbit Key desk mat, obviously it's not something that you absolutely need, but I do like having some sort of at least mouse pad or some sort of surface that my mouse can go on. So this desk mat does that and does it even more so. so Normally a desk mat is exactly what it sounds like. It's a mat that goes on your desk to give you a little bit of contrast, to make it look a little bit better, and obviously give you some better function when it comes to using a mouse on a mat. But this one gives you a lot of features and functions, which is something that I probably wouldn't normally talk about, but this desk mat gives you two main things that I absolutely love. So the first one is that on the top of it, you get a little lip, which is magnetized, and it brings a little cable organizer. So for instance, for these peripherals that use USB-C to charge and lightning to charge, being able to just put a cord through there and then moving that along that railing so it kind of lines up to where I want it, whether I'm charging the USB-C keyboard, the USB-C mouse, or even the lightning trackpad. It doesn't have to kind of start on the right-hand side and then move all the way to the left. I can just move that little cable organizer to the left side because it is a full metallic and magnetic railing that goes along the entire side of the desk mat. And then also what I like about it, because the fact that it is magnetized and I do use an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil a lot, being able to just throw my Apple Pencil on there and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere because not only is it a divot, but also it's magnetized on there, so it's really not gonna go anywhere. And then secondly, you can kind of tell that there's two different sections of this desk mat. So the top of it is made out of vegan leather. It's very premium to the feel, very premium to the touch. But then you can actually lift up that vegan leather, but then you can lift that leather piece and flap it up. But then underneath you can hide different maybe sheets of paper, some flat stuff that you kind of want to get out of the way, but you still need to get quick access to. So I kind of put brochures down there, some stickers that I plan on using eventually. That's what I hide down there. And then the bottom is made of felt to make sure that it doesn't mess with the actual desk itself. So that desk mat, if you're looking for a desk mat to use by Orbikey is absolutely amazing, highly recommend. And I'm gonna link all the items that I speak about in the description below for you guys to quickly check out. So now that we have the main peripherals out of the way and how we're gonna interact with the Mac Mini, the next thing you need is going to be a display. So the display that I have behind me is by a company called A-Logic. It's called the A-Logic Clarity. It's a 27 inch 4K UHD display, which gives you about 60 Hertz, so 60 FPS. And it works wonders. It's a great 4K display that works amazingly with the Mac Mini, especially when plugged in via USB-C but it is a little bit on the pricey side. The main things that I like about this monitor itself is that it gives you great color quality. It's very, very crisp. It gets extremely bright. The blacks are very, very black, but then also the actual stand and mount that it comes with is amazing. It gives you so many different angles for you to use your monitor in. You can swivel it right and left. You can swivel it on the X axis. On the, you can bring it up and down on the Y axis. And then also you have the Z axis as well if you wanna kind of tilt it one way or the other. So the mount itself is an engineering feat of its own, let alone an actual great display. And I do also use A-Logic's 4K cam because obviously with the Mac Mini, there's no built-in webcam anywhere. So that is the one that I personally use on a daily basis to get through my Zoom and Google Meets calls. So that is always just sitting on top, connects via USB-A on the rear of the actual monitor, and you're good to go. I will also link some more budget-friendly options down below for a monitor, like Kuri has a great one for under $100. It's a 24-inch HD panel. It does connect only via HDMI, but for $91, you're gonna have a dual monitor setup, so two 24-inch displays, 1080p, for under $200. So that is a great price to performance ratio and that's just a monitor that's gonna work and it's gonna work every single time you use it with no issues whatsoever. And then the last thing that I wanna mention with the Mac Mini is the hub that it's sitting on. So you might notice that the actual Mac Mini is sitting on top of what I call Satechi's kind of all-in-one built-in SSD enclosure hub. So it's exactly what it sounds like. So it's a platform that fits perfectly with the Mac Mini, so the Mac Mini just sits on top of it. It also has some additional vents in there, so it can still pass through air if it needs to from the bottom, or suck in air from the bottom to then push out from the rear. What I love about this is that it gives you some easy access ports on the front, because I do wish that Apple 
with the Mac Mini, similar to the Mac Studio, that they added some ports on the front of it for easy access. So, so what Satechi is able to do with this hub is give you some accessibility, some quick access ports on the front, like a USB-C port, three USB-A ports, a headphone jack, and then a micro SD and an SD card slot on the front of it. So you don't have to kind of like fiddle in, grab it, then go to the rear, plug something in, then kind of work around with all that mess. You don't have to touch any of that. So all you have to do is plug in the single USB-C cable to the rear of the actual Mac Mini, put the Mac Mini on top of this, and then you have full access to those ports. Now, Satechi does make just the hub itself, but they actually added a new version, which is kind of like a V2, which also adds an SSD enclosure built right into there. So if you do have an SSD that you can kind of put into an enclosure and it supports up to, I believe, two terabytes, maybe four terabytes, I'll clear that up in the description below, but it does work with NVMe storage. You put the SSD right in there and then through the USB-C port, it will talk to the actual Mac mini perfectly. Now it's not gonna be as fast as built-in storage, but it gets you pretty much all the way there, especially if you're a casual user that just wants to spend the cheapest amount of money on the computer and then get an external SSD for 50 or $100 from Amazon and then put it into this enclosure to kind of double, triple, even quadruple your storage for only $100. But that is the hub that I've been using from Satechi. I love it because it kind of fits perfectly with the Mac Mini. It fits the aesthetic. It kind of fits the same exact footprint. It takes up little to no room at all on your desk. And I just absolutely love what Satechi did there. And then adding the SSD enclosure, which I think was extremely smart. But those are all the accessories that I'm gonna recommend in order to get you started with the Mac Mini. But that is pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. I wanted to show off some of the accessories that I use to get me started with the Mac Mini. So we have a mouse, a keyboard, trackpad, display, and a hub in order to get you going with the Mac Mini. Now there are an abundance of accessories to go with the Mac Mini. These are just my recommendations. And again, the Mac Mini does have built-in speakers, which aren't amazing, but they do get the job done. But if you do wanna get some additional speakers, I will link some down in the description below for you guys to check out that are worth checking out if you want something that's a little bit more kind of bassy or just a little bit more than just what the Mac Mini has built in. But I personally use the Mac Mini with my AirPods Pro the entire time, and I rarely play music or anything out loud. That's why I didn't recommend any or have any on my desk per se. But between AirPods Pro and maybe a HomePod Mini, that's more than enough to connect to the Mac Mini itself for a audio solution. Leave some comments down below of what you use with your Mac Mini or what accessories you use with maybe even a MacBook Air or something that can also be used with a Mac Mini that you think is a necessity to setting up a Mac Mini and for a user experience standpoint. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know that you made it to the end. And like I said, leave some comments down below of your favorite accessories for your Mac Mini or your desk setup or what you got going on because I'm always curious to know and let's discuss in the comments. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys wanna watch more Mac OS, iOS, or iPad OS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.